You're listening to the Keep Optimizing Podcast to increase your traffic, improve your conversion rates, and grow your profits. Hello and welcome. If you're looking to improve the performance and return on investment of your marketing, then you've tuned in to the right podcast. I'm Chloe Thomas, the host of this Marketing Focus podcast, and it's really awesome to have you tuning in. In today's episode, we are finishing off our Affiliate Marketing Month, uh, and we are going to be talking about how to get started with affiliate marketing. So I have a suspicion that many of you have been listening in going, this, this affiliate thing's quite interesting. Oh, this sounds some, like something that could make me some money, uh, help me grow my sales, help me find some awesome customers. So we are finishing off with how to get started. I've got an excellent guest and we're going to be talking not only about setting up your affiliate account, we're also going to talk about whether or not you should use an affiliate network or use your own affiliate software. Uh, We're also going to talk about the role influencers have in the world of affiliate marketing and how to explore that further. So there's a lot coming up for you. Got an excellent guest who's sharing a lot of really good tips too. Uh, We are just about to meet today's guest. Before we do, though, please do check out the sponsors. This podcast is brought to you by Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform for brands of all kinds and sizes. Whether you're an entrepreneur just starting out or you're part of a marketing team at a multinational brand, Clavio will give you everything you need to create memorable marketing moments, building customer relationships that keep shoppers coming back time and time again. Get started with a free account today. Visit clavio.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash Masterplan. Today I'm chatting with affiliate marketing expert Arlen Robinson. Arlen is the COO and co-founder of OSI Affiliate Software, and he's been in the affiliate marketing world for over 20 years. Plus, he's the host of the e-commerce marketing podcast, who've recently gone past 200 episodes. Congrats on that, Arlen. Thank you, Chloe. I really appreciate it. It has been quite a journey and it's hard to believe we've hit 200 episodes, definitely. The big hundreds mean so much to podcast hosts. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They're lovely listeners. I do wonder if they, if they, if they, if it means quite as much to them as it does to us, but I take my hat off to you for reaching 200. We are, we're a long way from it here on Keep Optimizing, but we'll keep trying. <laughs> gotcha. Gotcha. Just keep plugging away. Thanks again. Yeah. Yeah, you, you guys will definitely get there. We'll get there. It, whether anyone else cares or not, I will get to 200. <laughs> right, right. Well, look, Arlen, we should, we're not here to talk podcasting. We're here to talk about affiliate marketing. So all those years ago, decades ago, how did you end up in the world of affiliate marketing? Uh, thank you for asking. And again, thank you for, for inviting me on the podcast. I'm super excited to be here. Um, but that's a great question. You know, it has been quite a journey. As you mentioned, it was, it's been over a 20 year journey <laughs> into this uh tech world. And actually, it started in about the year 2000 um, to kind of rewind things. You know, we started out our our main our company uh, main name is Omnistar Interactive. We started in about the year 2000 as a full service web development agency. So we were developing custom websites, custom web based applications for a variety of different startups, industries, different companies. Um, And we did that for about, you know, three to five years, just custom web work. Um, So we learned a lot and we learned that in a lot of these industries, a lot of these companies had different needs. Um, The, you know, the Internet was kind of really just getting going. You know, at the year 2000, traction was building, the web was exploding. But what we saw is that the next iteration of kind of the Internet was web functionality, you know, tools. What kind of things can you do online, whether it's email marketing, whether it's e-commerce, all of that stuff was exploding. And so we said, we decided to take a step back and said, okay, why don't we create our own tool set um, so that we can meet the needs of a variety of different companies, a variety of industries, rather than doing all of these custom web products projects because we were doing a lot of custom work and you know within each custom project we had web tools and you know some web solutions you know for that and so you know we we knew that there was a need for it and so we took a step back and we decided to create our own suite of solutions and that's really where the affiliate software was birthed Uh, we actually had the affiliate software and approximately about five other web tools you know from email mailing list uh, management we even had our own e-commerce shopping cart solution um, a web help desk and you know a variety of other solutions 
So we did that for several years where we managed all of these different web solutions. We were kind of like a an early SaaS company, an early software as a service company providing the subscription model. At that time, we were actually also selling the product itself uh, as well, where a company could purchase it outright, purchase a license, install it on their own servers. Of course, we since continued discontinued that and we're fully SaaS, which is really the, the trend these days, uh, just the subscription model. And so what we saw is that, yeah, that affiliate software was the one that really took off and we decided to discontinue our other solutions and then go full speed ahead with the affiliate software because it was really exploding and our numbers really spoke to that. And we just kind of put um, all of our efforts into the affiliate software and we've been continually um, growing the product, getting feedback from customers, trying to make it the best that it can be. And that brings us to where we are today, you know, a really fully mature product that, you know, still is continually growing because as everyone knows, the internet is ever changing. Um, so you, you got to stay on top of things. What I love about that story is that um, is that you've done something which we talk a lot about on on both my podcasts, which is listening to the customer. And you 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 tried all these things, and then the customer went, "We love your affiliate software. We're going to keep buying your affiliate software." And you went, "All right, yeah, we'll listen to them, and we're just going to focus on making it the best best we can make it." So I think um, I think that's such a core thing anyone needs to do in any business is to focus in on what the customer actually wants. So I love that. Exactly. But look, Arlen, we are here today to discuss how someone who is wanting to make their first steps with affiliate marketing can get into it. And I think uh, my, my first question to you is how to decide if affiliates is right for you, because it's not necessarily right for everybody. And you've certainly got to know why you want to get into it. It's not just like Google PPC where you just turn it on. It's a bit more complicated than that. So what should a retailer be thinking about to decide if affiliates is right for them? Okay, great, great question. And, and really, before I dig deep and, and, and really answer that, I want to kind of explain the difference between a, uh, an affiliate program and a referral program, because a lot of times they're used you know, interchangeably. A lot of times people think, say affiliate, they say referral program. There is a distinct difference. Um, so first off, a referral program is actually where you would get your customers to refer, you know, typically people that they know to your to your brand. They refer people that they know to your brand and they get an incentive for that referral. The incentives you just typically discount towards future purchases or cash incentive or some type of gift. Um, and so that's what a referral program is when customers are referring people that they know. Now affiliate program is just a little bit different. The affiliate program is you're getting outside people, outside affiliates or influencers. Affiliates and influencers are really kind of almost the same thing these days, but you're getting outside people, people that may have never used your brand before, but you're getting them to promote your brand to their larger network. And usually these affiliates or these influencers have a network across various social channels, the Facebooks, the Instagrams, the Twitters, the LinkedIn's, or um, you name it, they'll have some type of network of followers, and then that's how they're going to promote it. With the affiliates, you're going to typically provide them what's customary these days is you're going to provide them with a cash incentive, usually a uh, a percentage of an order total or some type of fixed amount that you agree upon with them. And so that's that's the difference. Um, now, as far as to answer your question, as far as how does a company, an e-commerce company, determine if this is right for them, whether it's a referral program or an affiliate program? Um, to answer that, really, what I've seen over the years is there's not too many companies that it's not right for um, because the bottom line is as long as you have a product that can be promoted across any of the social platforms um, and without having any type of legality issues, whether it's a product, let's say, that's restricted, you know, maybe it's because, uh, you know, here in the U.S., one of the things right now that e-commerce brands are struggling with is uh Cannabis and 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 that type of thing, the hemp. I mean, I'm not sure if you guys have that same issue yeah, we over the, there. We've got the whole CBD thing going on, which is limited in in your marketing channels because it comes under a lot of the pharma regulations, doesn't it? Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so, you know, if you have a product like that, it could be a little tricky because you're going to have affiliates promoting on certain channels that where it may not be acceptable. So it's a little tough. Um, and if you have other products like that that are a little touchy, such as um, 
you know, such as arms or guns, things like that, where it can be a little tricky on social media. If, if you're in any of those kind of niche uh, brands where you're selling those type of products, where it's a little touchy based on your government's regulations, then you may want to really do your research first before you do it. Um, other than that, I'd say it's wide open for any e-commerce brand to start an affiliate program. And I, I definitely encourage any brand to do it. And so, you know, if you're selling anything else other than some of, some of those products where it's a little touchy, I say, you know, go go for it. You know, whether it's food, whether it's, you know, fashion, electronics, you name it. Um, it's something that can definitely benefit your business. And the main reason for that is what I said earlier. It's the affiliates or these influencers that you're tapping into have really a built-in audience of people that you would not normally be able to tap into. And that's the biggest benefit for, you know, for doing it. So given this affiliate plan is, is available for pretty much any business to give a go to, how do we get ready for going live? How do we think through what, what decisions have we got to make to make it successful? Good question. Um, the first thing is you want to think about, of course, you know, like you mentioned, laying really the foundation. Now, that's really what's the most important thing before you get started. You don't want to just kind of jump into it. So you want to think about really, you know, what is your brand about? Uh, who's your target demographic? Um, and also, how how do you as your own brand owner, how are you typically attracting customers? Because once you do that, that's going to really help you narrow down the types of affiliates or influencers that you're going to want to target because you know the, we, these days there's affiliates and influencers and so many different um you know niches and genres that have so many different particular audiences so you want to really clearly define you know your audience and then see how that's going to mesh with the audience of these affiliates so definitely get that established uh first firstly I'm going to jump in now, Alan, because there's a couple of things you said which are just triggering thoughts in me, and, and also that I just want to tie into another episode we did. So, sure. one of the one of those things you've got to think about from an affiliate perspective is what I was talking about with um, Amy from a, from Webgains, even nearly got her company wrong, um, which is around you know you kind of you have the voucher code and discount site affiliates and you've got content affiliates, then you've got the CSS affiliates. There's all these different types. You kind of got to decide which ones are going to fit well with your brand. But then the more the the even more interesting thing you were saying about that, Arlen, was around you've got influencers and you've got affiliates. And it strikes me that that's one of the big things that that is bringing a lot of retailers to the world of affiliates now is that they've got, they're running these micro or nano influencer programs mm -hmm. where they want to reward the influencer for success. They don't want to just give them a free product or just pay them something. They want to give them a commission. So they may be working with people who don't see themselves as affiliates, but who are very much up for being paid by, by commission. So it strikes me that we've kind of got we probably got listening, a group of retailers who are into the idea of turning their influencer channel into a cost per acquisition channel rather than a flat fee channel. Mm -hmm. And then we've got people who are going, I want to tap into those big, solid affiliate, traditional affiliate channels, um, you know, like, like the content networks and the voucher code sites and the price comparison engines and that sort of thing. Is that because you're spending a lot of time, a lot more time than I am talking to retailers who are launching affiliates, um, this affiliate channel, do you see them kind of breaking down into those two clear groups or is it more of a merge between them these days? What I typically see is things kind of merging, actually, to tell you the truth. Um, and, you know, these different worlds of, uh, you know, the influencers, the affiliates, and just really kind of all in one. You kind of mentioned a couple of things now um, when you were, you were speaking that there's a lot of people that are either, you know, they're affiliates, they have a certain following, but their whole goal wasn't necessarily to to do what they're doing for, you know, a commission or an invoice. It just so happens they have a following, you know, maybe they're doing it because they're, you know, they're really passionate about educating people on a certain topic. Um, but then, you know, because of, of all of that and because of their whole following, they're naturally going to, 
you know, attract brands, you know, because brands these days are looking for all types of avenues to trap, you know, to tap into, you know, a certain audience. And so um, I think those people really just almost become affiliates by default. Um, you know, they kind of just step into it. That's not their goal. But then at the same time, there's also people that that's what they do that i mean if you look at if they say who they are they say oh, okay i'm an affiliate marketer that's yeah. their title so to speak and so their goal is really to just to seek out brands so they're doing it a little bit differently they're that's their their job their goal is to seek out affiliate um this this goal is to seek out e-commerce brands and you know they have ways and they have networks in which they can promote the brand too and so i think it's it's really just kind of those two two th types of things um, but they're really, they're all doing the, the same work, so to speak, you know, it's just, I think a matter of how they're, how they initially have engaged with these brands. Yeah, it's interesting, isn't it? It's kind of the, we've, as retailers, we need to be uh, retail marketers. We need to be very aware that the people who we're aiming to get onto our affiliate program may or may not think of themselves as affiliates, but might be perfect targets. So, um, but but we we digress into an area that um, that I think we both find fascinating, but which isn't about getting started with affiliate marketing. So I'm I'm clearly in a tangential mood here today. So apologies, everyone, for that. Okay, next question then, Arlen. If we've we've worked out that it's right for our business. We thought about what sort of affiliates or influencers we want to bring on board. There's a really key decision that someone needs to make to go into affiliate marketing because they need some kind of software to track um, all the th stuff that's going on and to manage the payments, the affiliates and all this kind of stuff. And we have essentially two big decisions. And one is to go with an off-the-shelf software solution like yourselves, where we're going to build it ourselves, or we go to one of the big affiliate networks, the AWINs, the Trade Doublers, the Commission Junctions or CJs, and we tap into their software in turn, or their network in return for a fee, we get access to more stuff theoretically. There's pros and cons to each. So Let's start off with why someone would be best off doing it on their own app, because obviously that's that's the world you're coming from. So, so what what's the key benefits of doing it with your own affiliate app rather than using a network? A great question, Chloe, and that's the question that I often get because you know people see that that there's two distinct paths that they can go to. So, but of course, I'm going to be a little biased, as you know, <laughs> because <laughs> I am the co-founder of Outside Affiliate Software, and I want people to go our route. But uh, bias aside, um, one of the main advantages, this distinct advantages to creating your own affiliate program is the control factor. You're going to be an full control over every aspect of it, the commissions, um, the offering, um, you know, layout, um, how people and how these affiliates engage with the program, the dashboard, all of that you'll have, you'll be in control of, you know, of course there's limitations based on the software that you're using, but you know, essentially you have full control over it. And the biggest thing that I've seen with the networks as opposed to starting your own is the fee structure which is really a big thing. Most of these affiliate networks, the larger ones charge a pretty hefty fee just to be a part of their network. You know, if we're looking at like the commission junctions of the world, um, you know, you're, you're, to get in there, you're looking at at least three to $5,000 just to get in there, which is their initial, you know, setup fee or to get into their, their network. And that's just to get in there. Outside of that, uh, you're gonna be paying them a percentage of every referred sale as well. So they're they're not only getting the upfront fee, you're getting a percentage of the overall sale. Um, so that's really a big thing there. Um, if you're a brand, maybe that's just getting started and that's a lot to you, you don't really, you want to get into affiliate marketing, but you can't afford those fees. And yeah, you know, starting your own definitely um, is a lot more cost effective because you're really just paying for the the software solution, the monthly fee for the software. And then that's it. Other than that, it's just time, whether it's yourself or somebody on your staff that's going to be setting it up and managing it, you know, for you. So that's, I'd say, one of kind of the distinct differences, one of the, the reasons why I, I kind of tell people, especially startup brands, people just getting started to look more at the uh, setting up their own software. Um, now, there are other alternatives, though, uh, you know, to. I guess you could say play devil devil advocate. There's other cheaper <laughs> networks um, that are out there, such as the um, 
uh, what is it? Um, and then the name is escaping me. But yeah, there are other smaller ones that are not commission junction um, that don't have those hefty fees. They, they all still are going to charge a um the, the commission, fee, per, aren't they? yeah, the yeah. override fee, the percentage, and so that's that's always going to be the case. But there's there's some less expensive ones. Yeah, and I'm I'm, I'm going to play the devil's advocate for you and kind of make make a little bit of the case for the networks. So um, everything Arlen said is quite right. There there are you are in a lot more control if you've got your own software. It's a lot cheaper if you've got your own software because you're not paying those overrides, which are. Um, a percentage of everything you pay affiliates that the affiliate network will take. And you're not paying those potentially massive fees. And the numbers Arlen was saying, you know, it, it's not unusual here in the UK to see a five grand setup fee, which is a huge chunk of cash for, for, for just setting up. So the question is, what are you paying for if you're doing that? Well, um, the, the networks will argue and there's, I'm not saying either route, you know, you've got, as with everything we do on the show, it's all about finding the right option for you. So we're going to give you the stuff and then you can go and make up your own mind. And if you find the salesperson on the right day, you may get a much better deal than what we're talking about here. But what you will, what you, what you also get with the networks is you get various technology, um, which in some sectors can be really, really useful, uh, some verticals. And you also get um, a whole host of affiliates who are already signed up to their network. So if you if you're on, I don't know, uh, let's say Web Gains, and um, you speak get speak to someone and they happen to already be on the Web Gains, an affiliate who's already on the Web Gains platform, it's really super easy for them to start um, marketing you because you're both already on the same network platform. So that's kind of kind of the 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 benefits I would say from the network side of things, but. As we're about to explore imminently, um, the rest of the work we're about to start talking about, you have to do whichever route you go down. Um, so that's the that's that's the key the key areas there. I think, Arlen, would you say there's any other reasons to go on the network side? Yeah, I mean, you mentioned those are the key things. I guess the the the, the, the main biggest reason, of course, is you're getting ex instant exposure to that network of the uh, the affiliates that are already in there looking for. Uh, deals and brands to promote. So, you know, that's that's the biggest thing. And, you know, that's a question, of course, that people that are getting into affiliate program um, marketing and launching their own affiliate programs, it's, that's always the next question. Once everything is set up, okay, how do I find affiliates? And, you yeah. know, the affiliate networks definitely provide that. Um, but, you know, you're, you're going to pay the cost for that. Indeed. I know, you know, five, 10 years ago, the networks had a better argument because then affiliates might be exclusive to certain networks. But um, one of the episodes, the last episode in this series, actually, I was talking to Chris Tragic from Publisher Discovery, who who has a software platform that's all about finding affiliates. And he was he was looking it up as we were talking, and he was looking at affiliates who were connected to 99 plus different affiliate networks. Oh, wow. So- <laughs> So affiliates, if they want to promote you, they will sign up to your system. Um, it's not it's not a barrier. It's just probably a bit of a speed thing. Okay, Arlen, you mentioned finding affiliates and getting people on board. For me, that that kind of starts with working out what your offer is to the affiliates. Mm -hmm. um, so let, let's tackle that first. How do we decide how much commission we're going to pay people? For affiliates, it's, it's pretty simple. I mentioned affiliate and referral program. You know, like I said, there's a distinct difference. The referral programs you're dealing with the customers. The with the affiliate side of things, you're dealing with these outside affiliates or influencers. Um, what's standard and what's typical is a percentage of an order total. I think you mentioned that earlier. Percentage commission of the order total or a fixed amount. Um, and unfortunately, there's no really set rule of thumb as far as amounts are concerned with an affiliate program. There's more of a rule of thumb dealing with the, the referral program, but with an affiliate program, you're going to really, a lot of it is going to be dictated on really at what level that affiliate or what it, the influencer is, like how, how large is their audience. They're probably going to command, uh, you know, a, a certain fee based on their audience. Um, and so, you know, it could range anywhere from, you know, what I've seen for a, a affiliates that have, you know, a decent off, uh, a decent audience, you know, we're looking at, you know, the, uh, the micro uh, uh, influences of the world that have, you know, a little bit less than 
um, or anything greater than a thousand followers on any of the networks. You know, and if you're looking at that range, I always see as a starting point, 20% commission, 20 to 30%, you know, in that particular range. Now, that's no way near a, just kind of a, a hard and fast rule. You know, you do have to look at you know, your overall margin, you know, what are you taking home at the end of the day? Of course, <laughs> after you've paid for the product, you know, your cost of goods, uh, you know, your advertising um, fees, you know, all of those other overhead costs, you got to look at all of that. And then on top of this, you add those fees that you're paying the affiliates. You definitely at the end of the day, want to make sure you make money. Um, all right, like, But like I said, I see it as a starting point, 20%, 20, 30% as a starting but when you start getting to those higher levels of affiliates or influencers, let's say like the micro influencers that have, you know, greater than about 100,000 followers on any of the, the you know, the major uh, social networks, definitely going to have to get a, get a little bit higher. You're going to have to get towards the 40, 50 percent commission just because of the following that they have and the amount of exposure that they're going to give you in the potential audience. Um, and then, you know. If you get past that, and let's say your brand is doing really <laughs> good, and you can attract the, the celebrity levels that have you know greater than a million followers, then you're you're kind of in a, a whole different ball game. What I usually see at that level is not really a percentage of an order total. What I see is um, with these celebrities, what they'll do is they will charge a specific amount per post. Uh, on their social channels, you know that's what's customary. I've seen you know some of the largest celebrities like the, um, you know the uh, Kardashian clan um, of the world. Mm -hmm. <laughs> They've um, they're in the you know several hundred thousands per post, a hundred thousands of dollars per post. So if you get to that level, that's really what you're looking at. You're looking at a cost per post because they know whatever they say, they have so much engagement. You're you're going to really get a lot of bang for your buck on that. The great thing about if you're running your own um, your own software for your affiliate network is even if you're working with someone who wants a flat fee, whether it's a hundred pounds or it's a hundred thousand pounds flat fee, you can ask them to use the link and just not attribute any commission to it, and you can track the results there. So you could put right. all your your influencer activity through the same platform and making it so much easier to track the results of of the different different people you're working with. Mm -hmm. I mean, something I'd, I'd also say is is you're not necessarily going to be publishing all these rates on the front end. So often with influencers, these rates get negotiated and then you you put them live. Uh, or you, you set them up on their individual accounts. Often with a, especially if you're on the, the networks and you're after the kind of more traditional affiliates, you may be looking more at an 8 to 10% commission. Mm -hmm. But the quality of the customer might not be as good. So this might be, you know, working with a voucher code site, you're not going to offer a voucher code site 20 to 30 percent. Don't for those of you who are having a minor heart attack about what that would do to your margin. <laughs> right. That's not what you're going to be doing. So kind of it, it's like any marketing, really, the greater the quality, the higher the potential price goes. Wouldn't you say, Alan? Exactly. That's that is so true. Um, so it's the quality, higher the quality, the higher uh, or the larger the networks that these affiliates have. Um, and then, you know, just you, you're also going to want to look at their engagement. So, you know, it's a, it's a tricky thing. I, what I have seen is, you know, you also do have to be careful when you're engaging these affiliates and these influencers, because you can't get a lot of times what I've seen is brands get fooled by a high follower count. You know, you see a influ potential influencer or affiliate and, you know, you see they've got 200,000 followers on Instagram, you know, they've got, um, you know, all of these followers on Twitter, you know, hundreds of thousands of followers on Twitter. So, off, you know, off the top, but just with a quick glance, you're like, wow, you know, they look great. They're in my niche. But you do have to dig a little bit deeper. What you want to look at is the engagement that they have with their followers. You know, just because they have a, you know, unfortunately these days, there's a lot of ways to get followers. There's companies that actually sell followers. So you can't be fooled. Um, and so what you got to look at is the engagement. When I say engagement, uh, you want to look at firstly, you know, okay, how often are they posting? When they do post, um, what's, what is the common activity looking like? Um, is there comments in, you know, initially soon after the post? And if so, 
Um, are they engaging with their followers? Are they commenting back? Are they giving helpful advice? Um, are, are they creating a dialogue there? Um, that's how you know. If you're seeing a lot of that on every post, then you know this is kind of the real deal. This is somebody that's really you know engaging with their audience. And you want to look at even those comments. Is it just a, a generic comment or is it really seem like it's their real voice coming through, their real opinion about something? So you want to look at that because on the flip side, there could be affiliates of uh, or influencers have that high follower account. But then when you look at the comments, you'll see per post very little comments. Um, you know, if they if there's any comments, you know, it's just some generic information. Um, and that's, you know, kind of a telltale sign that, you know, there's uh, could be something fishy going on and they're just um, <laughs> bo boosting their, their follower account by maybe paying for followers. Brilliant. Well, thank you for all of that, Arlen. We're now going to pause for a reminder of our sponsors, and then we're going to talk about the wider world of affiliate marketing. Success in 2021 means building stronger relationships with your customers. Last year saw a lot of consumers switching to buy online, leading to surges in new customer acquisition. So how are you planning on turning your new first-time buyers into profitable repeat customers? Well, that's what Clavio is for. Clavio helps businesses create memorable marketing moments through email, SMS and personalised website experiences. And that is what creates repeat purchases. That's why Clavio, the ultimate e-commerce marketing platform, is used by over 50,000 e-commerce brands around the world. Get started with your free account today. Visit clavio.com slash masterplan. That's K-L-A-V-I-Y-O dot com slash masterplan. Okay, Arlen, so far we've gone deep into getting started with affiliate marketing. Now you get to wow us with your insider knowledge about the whole of affiliate marketing. So for the following questions, your answer can be anything to do with affiliate marketing, which of course does include getting started with affiliate marketing. So Arlen, you ready for these tips? Sure, definitely. Okay, let's start with affiliate marketing newbie advice. If we've inspired someone to take their first step with affiliate marketing, what do they need to know to give themselves the best chance of success? Okay, you know, we talked about a couple of these things already, um, you know, earlier on. Uh, we talked about definitely that determining what that incentive is, targeting, figuring out who your target affiliate is beforehand, before you, you kind of... Uh, you know, cast your your fishing line out there. You want to make sure you know who you're looking for. The next thing I think that's important when getting started is thinking about what is going to be the best type of promotional materials and media that you're going to make available for them. You want to do this really start doing this beforehand, because the, what I've seen is that when you launch an affiliate program and you get these influencers, if you don't give them the right media, when I say media, I'm talking about graphics for social posts, uh, banners for their for their sites or for their blogs, uh, messaging in the form of you know text you know messages that they can post across the social networks, you know um, emails um, and all of that written emails, all of this stuff you want to make available you know in the pool of your affiliate software so that when they do get in there they do create their account they're ready to go they don't have to do too much thinking because these affiliates these influencers are busy promoting you know a lot of different brands and they don't have time to try to think about it you know create their own media even though some of them do a lot of them do like to personalize things they do like to come up with their own graphics and media but you do want to make sure you you give them as much as best possible because you know the less work that they have to do the better you know their whole you want to make sure that their focus is just promoting so that they you know you want to make sure and ensure that they have everything they need you know to be able to to do that great advice i love that because it, it's it's so easy to forget that that even once you've recruited them you've still got to make their lives easy make it easy for them to work with you exactly okay once you've started, of course, you've got to keep optimizing. So what's your favorite way to improve affiliate marketing performance? Uh, great question. Yeah. You know, just like any uh, marketing tactic, um, you've always got to look at the results and keep, uh, you know, you know, keep pivoting. Um, so, you know, number one, you want to look at and you want to measure the analytics of, of everything that you're doing. So from day one of once you launch the affiliate program, you want to look at you know, your sales and your traffic stats 
specifically coming from all of these affiliates. Um, because what I've always seen with a lot of the brands that are using our technology, and this is, I think, no matter what technology you're using, you're going to quickly see there's going to be some top dogs in the pack. <laughs> there's always going to be a few affiliates that are going to be your main affiliates that are going to be the standouts. They're going to send you the bulk of that. And so, you know, in order to see that, you have to look at the stats, the traffic that they're sending, the sales that they're sending within a specific set of time. Um, based on that, then what you want to do in order to kind of improve and optimize is you want to take a look at how are they promoting? Um, what are the social channels that they're promoting on that they're sending the sales that you're getting the majority of the sales from? So let's say you have an affiliate and he's one of the top dogs and the majority of the sales he's sending is coming from Facebook. So in order to, to maybe, let's say, optimize what he's doing on Facebook, take a look at your graphic media, your uh, posts, the social posts that you're giving them and double down on that, increase that, come up with more, um, come up with other types and and then, you know, just go from there. So you really want to, you know, look at where the sales and traffic is coming from and then just further, you know, improve what you're offering that would be available across those channels and, and that they can make available across those channels when they're promoting. Nice. And if someone listening wants to learn more about affiliate marketing, is there one cheap or free resource you'd recommend? Uh, yes, definitely. Um, well, because we have been in this industry such a long time, we have a ton of blog posts on getting started with affiliate marketing. Um, I'll give you some uh, social uh, some links to these blog posts um, that I think will be relevant to your audience and they'll be able to check those out on our website. So we have a number of different uh, posts. Uh, we've even created some in-depth um uh, ebooks and PDF guides that are really comprehensive when it comes to affiliate marketing. And we can make those available, you know, to, to all of your listeners as well. Marvellous. Well, we'll make sure those are in the show notes for all of you. So you can go and have a, have a good look at all of those and learn, learn even more. Um, finally, Arlen, it's crystal ball time. What's coming up in the next six to 12 months that we should be getting ready for in affiliate marketing? Um, well, within the next six to uh, you know eight or twelve months, you, one of the things that's really big for affiliate marketing is you want to make sure your affiliates can take advantage of seasonal holiday sales. That's a big thing for affiliates because they know there's always going to be a spike of activity, and that, that's when they do a lot of their promoting. So, you know, right now when this is while we're recording this, we are, you know. Um, in uh, March or in the March about to, to approach April. Um, and so if we're looking at, looking at the holiday season, the Christmas holidays and all of that, you know, we're, we're pretty early for that, but it's now it's definitely a good idea to kind of keep that in, in, in mind. What holiday sales that you're going to come up with? And then when you're doing that, uh, we mentioned earlier about the media and the creatives that you, you, are, you normally are going to provide the affiliates. Start thinking about the, incent the, the media and the creatives that you're going to need to provide these incentives uh, so, excuse me, to provide these creatives for your affiliates so that they, you know, they have the, the right things in place. You definitely don't want to wait to the last minute, uh, you know, for your holiday promotional, you know, materials. Um, and of course, tell them when it's all happening as well, yes, because exactly. that's, it always, it always, I always find it slightly crazy when people are partnering with other people like affiliates and it's the day before Black Friday and they drop them an email and go, by the way, we're running Black Friday. And it's like, mm -hmm. Did you not think this this awesome person who drives you loads of traffic might have been working on their Black Friday, which is a huge opportunity for them for maybe the last two months? You know, you've got to you've got to tell them early what you're doing. Bring them into your team, don't you? Exactly, exactly. Because they're really essentially they are you know part of their your team. Um, and then you know, lastly, uh, one of the things that's also it's big now, but it's going to be bigger than ever. These influencers. I mean, the, this whole influencer culture we're in where you have all of these influencers attracting huge amounts of attention, huge amount of followers, that's just getting bigger and bigger as the months, um, you know, move on. And there's, you know, it's more popular than ever. And so one of the things that you want to do when you're thinking about approaching these influencers is look for ones that uh, provide authentic content 
to their audience because you know there's a lot of fake people out here that are just doing it just to to earn some commissions and to earn cash from these brands but they're not really authentic um and i think it's it's kind of pretty easy to sniff it out you can tell which um, of influencers really are authentic in how they're promoting. You know, they usually open themselves up. They open their whole lives up to their audience. And, you know, you can really tell who's authentic. How are they dialoguing, you know, with their followers? And so, um, you know, definitely, uh, you know, with these next few months, definitely focus on getting to those authentic, um, you know, influencers so you can really dive into that right audience. Nice. Alan, brilliant advice there. I love it. Um, we are nearly at the end of the show, though. So could you please let the listeners know where they can find you and your business on the web and social media, please? OK, not a problem. Um, a quick link to get to our site would just be getosi.com. That's G-E-T-O-S-I.com. That's a quick link that'll forward to our site, uh, our osiaffiliate.com website, where they can just go to getosi.com. Um, and take a look at what we offer there. Um, If anyone wants to get in touch with me and and actually get access to all of my social channels, um, they can just go to my site, which is arlenrobinson.com. You can have that in the the notes as well. So arlenrobinson.com to to get a hold of me if they want to pick my brain anymore. And, uh, you know, lastly, for all of your listeners, we got a a nice little discount um, promo. Um, If somebody wants to sign up for any of our plans and get a 10% ongoing lifetime discount on any of our plans um, they can just go to get osi.com forward slash ko for you know keep optimizing um k as in kangaroo always an oscar so that's get osi.com forward slash ko if they go there they will um, be able to get the discount across any of our plans Awesome. Thank you very much for that, Arlen. I'm sure there'll be a few people hitting you up for uh, for questions and answers and all sorts of things after this, because you've been absolutely brilliant today. You've shared, you've shared so much. It's been um, It's been brilliant. So thank you very much for being on the Keep Optimising podcast. No problem. And thank you, Chloe, for having me. Okay, so there you have it. Lots of different ways to go about starting your journey into affiliate marketing. And I realize there's quite a lot to think about there. But the key thing really is, why are you getting into affiliate marketing? Is it to make more better relationships with your influencers? Is it tap it to tap into those kind of traditional affiliate audiences like the voucher codes and the content affiliates and those kind of things? Because how you put things together will vary depend on, on those two aims. Are you going to do it with your own software and take advantage of those low setup costs and that full control? Or are you going to tap into the power of the networks and pay uh, you know the fees that go alongside that? Then it's about working out what can you afford to give away and what's going to be your flat flat rate scheme and what are you going to, going to be willing to negotiate with people. Then launch, speak to those affiliates. We didn't do a huge amount on how to find affiliates. That's partly because um, we did a whole episode on that last time uh, with Chris Tragett from Publisher Discovery. So have a listen to that if you want to, to find out more about finding affiliates. Um, and we didn't get into a lot of the affiliate, different affiliate types because we talked about that when we were talking about full price sales strategy um, with Amy from WebGains, which was two episodes ago. So lots of content across these four affiliate episodes for you to get stuck into to improve your affiliate marketing. Um, you can get links to everything we discussed today, the full transcript of the episode, important notes and more at keepoptimizing.com. And there you will also find the social media month we did, which had a lot on influencers in it. So if you're going, ooh, influencers plus affiliate marketing sounds sexy, uh, then go to keepoptimizing.com and check out our social media uh, topic because there you'll find some really cool influencer recommendations, which fit really nicely with this content about, uh, about affiliates too. As you know, we also, at the end of every month, run a Q&A webinar where you can ask your questions about the month's topic with our guests. So it's affiliate marketing webinar coming up very soon. Go and find out all about when that's happening or if it's happened, watch the replay by heading to keepoptimizing.com and going to the affiliate marketing page. Please do sign up and join us. I'm sure you've got questions about this because it's the very first time we've covered it on the podcast and it'd be lovely to see you there. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Keep Optimizing podcast. I hope you found it useful. I hope we've inspired some more of you to give affiliates a go because there's a lot of potential there if you're ready to build those relationships with your affiliates. Please do 
tell um, your fellow marketers about the show because my aim is to help as many of them as possible. So I'd really appreciate it if you could tell them about the show so I can help them too. And make sure you tune in next Wednesday where we will be starting our series of six shows about Google ads. Yes, we are going Google ads crazy in May. So if you know someone who's particularly interested in Google ads, then it would be a good time to let them know about the show so they can catch the very first episode on that we put live um, next week. Have a great week and make sure you listen to the next episode so I can help you to keep optimising your marketing. Access everything Keep Optimising at keepoptimising.com. That's with an S, not a Z.